spoken word you are singing over me you have been so so good to me for I took a breath been so, so kind to me. Oh, 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 oh. 
first found you. And I hope you're like me. I'm, I'm glad he didn't leave me there. Lord, thank you that while we were sinners, Jesus went to the cross for us. Church, would you join with me just to declare that this morning, no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No one won't keep down, lie won't tear down, coming after me. Y'all mind if I just preach to you this morning what God has put on my heart, and I just I want to share with you as openly and, and honestly as I can as we venture into this new teaching series uh, entitled "It's Time to Get Out of the Boat." I wonder if we got anybody in here that likes to fish a little bit. Anybody like me? Any any fishermen? A few of you. Uh, my mom uh, was it was and is the most uh, diehard fisherwoman. Is that a thing? Fisherwoman, uh, she and my daddy loved to, to go out on the boat. They'd go out, uh, you know, on the dock. It didn't matter as they got older and couldn't take the boat out, and they sold it. They would just go sit on the dock out at Mineral Wells Lake or there, uh, anywhere they could find where they could put a hook in the water. And she loved to fish. My mom loved fishing so much that it was difficult to get her to go home in the evening. And you might think, well, if the fish weren't biting, maybe she'd get bored. No, that just made her want to stay there until she caught something. And you might think, well, if they were biting really good, maybe she would get her filled. No, she said, we can't leave till they stop biting. And I remember as a kid, I would sometimes, you know, get impatient. And I would, I would want to, uh, you know, head on to the house. And y'all probably heard this phrase before. The first time I ever saw my mom really get mad at me is when she was in the middle of catching some crappie. Anybody know crappie some good eating? She was in the middle of just laying those things out there, some big old slab crappie. And I got so frustrated. The batteries in my game board were dead. I was sunburned on 98% of my body. I was ready to go home, and I said, Mama, I'm ready to go home. If you love me, if you care about me at all, we will go home right now. And she, son, I, she said, Son, I do love you. I love you so much that I gave you life. I brought you into this world. But if you don't let me catch these crappie, I can take you out of it too. And she really did say that to me. And I know you've probably heard that phrase. It was just weird hearing that out of my little five foot three, saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost mama. Uh, I knew she meant it, though. Uh, she'd have chopped me up for bait if I hadn't have kept my mouth shut, because that scares the fish, you know. Uh, but when I talk about saying it's time to get out of the boat, I'm not talking about fishing. I'm not, I'm, I'm gonna, we're going to look at some examples in Scripture of uh, people who were in different situations that, that we can relate to, the different situations, di different boats. The, the first thing we're going to talk about uh, in this series is the story of Noah. That's what my firstborn son's name is. He's named after 
the man in the Bible named Noah. I'm so proud that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And I pray that my son will too. It says in Scripture that before Jesus returns, it will be like it was in the days of Noah. And y'all, I'm telling you, I wouldn't be at all surprised if my kids are not the final generation to, to be on this earth because Jesus is returning soon. Amen. He could come back at any moment. And so I, I pray that, that God still finds people faithful. He still finds that remnant of those that believe in him, that don't care what culture is doing. They worry about what Christ is doing. And so as we talk today about Noah, I want to ask you to turn to Genesis, the 8th chapter. Genesis chapter 8. And I want to speak to you again on this topic of it's time to get out of the boat. And specifically, let's talk a little bit about Noah's new adventure. Uh, we Probably almost all of us, if not all of us, were told the story of Noah, the account of Noah, when we were young. You know, uh, they decorate kids' nurseries and arcs and animals. And, uh, you know, the, it, it's one of the most beloved, you know, children's stories and most familiar I can remember being taught on flannel board. Those of you that are young, that's, that's like an iPad, but you stick stuff on it. And, and we, we, I had a Sunday school teacher that taught Noah's Ark, and she let me put the animals two by two and, and, and all those things, and I learned about Noah when I was a little bitty. Uh, you know, beautiful story. There's the rainbow at the end and the, the dove that's sent out. So, many, so much beautiful imagery uh, that we find in Scripture. But can I tell you, before we really get to some of that beautiful stuff, uh, I please... I don't want you to overlook, please recognize, there were some pretty uh, terrible things that this world endured during the flood, during this time. Noah's Ark, uh, while we've tried to kind of popularize it and, and sterilize it a little bit, it, it's a very powerful story. It's a very overwhelming thing to think about what happened in the world at that time. People were so evil that you know the story that God said he was going to destroy them. He was going to wipe them out with this great flood. So if you've got Genesis, the eighth chapter, uh, look with me at verse 15. And if you're able, would you stand, please, for the reading of God's word this morning? Genesis 8, 15 says, Then God spoke to Noah, saying, Go out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing of all flesh that is with you, birds and cattle and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth so that they may abound on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. I'm afraid I'm taking that verse a little too literally, but that's beside the point. So Noah went out and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him. Every animal, every creeping thing, every bird and whatever creeps on the earth, according to their families, went out of the ark. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean animal and of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a soothing aroma. Then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake, although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Nor will I again destroy every living thing as I have done. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. Would you please pray for me and pray with me about the word of God that it would go forth unimpeded this morning. God, I thank you so much for the gift of scripture. But Lord, I'm thankful that's not all we've got. We also have the Holy Spirit God in us that speaks to us. And so, Lord, I pray that you speak to us from your word, but give us a word straight from your heart, straight from your mouth, God, straight from heaven. Speak to new, us new life today, I pray. And let it change us, transform us to realize that we are your children and we are to follow you and we are, are to give our very all to you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. And everyone that agrees said, amen. You may be seated. And If you'll just hold that scripture, we're going to look back at it several times, Genesis Eight. And there's, there's a few things I want you to consider before we get into the points of today's message. Uh, first of all, just think with me again about what happened in the flood. What we just read, this is the aftermath. Uh, this is, you know, kind of what would happen at the credits of a movie. You're kind of at the end and everything's wrapping up. God's speaking to Noah and saying, you know, uh, get out of the ark. Get, get your family, your, your wife, your sons and their wives. Bring all the animals out. And a lot of people, I think, just... We, we know there was a flood. We know that Noah and his family are the only ones saved. But the impact of that, I just want the, us to, to take a moment to appreciate what occurred here 
they were not in the boat for just a little while before they got out. In fact, a lot of people, uh, you know, they're not, it's not like people are, are unlearned. We just hear certain things so much. You know how long it rained, right, with Noah? 40 days and 40 nights. A lot of people know that. Not as many people know how long they spent on the ark. A lot of people think, well, it rained 40 days and 40 nights. They were on the ark for 40 days. And you think about, I can't imagine, y'all, uh, when, when my kids were sick a few weeks ago, I was getting cabin fever. I'd spent three days. They couldn't get out of the house. They couldn't go anywhere. I thought I was going to lose my mind. I kept telling Victoria, I got to go to the church and pray. I just got to go. Go be, go be alone with the Lord. Or else I'm going to, you know, just just go, go stir crazy. And I hated the kids. They were getting restless being in there. Can you imagine being in a boat with all these animals, caring for them, feeding them, smelling them for 40 days and 40 nights? That would be bad enough. But if you add up all the time, the time that after the rains ceased and when they just drifted, and even the time once they had, you know, stopped and rested on the mountain, but they had to wait for the waters to recede, they were in the ark about 378 days. There were a year in this boat. And I tell you, a lot of times in our life, when we go through difficulties, being in the ark would have been no easy thing. Can you imagine? I, I don't mean to be just graphic for the sake of being graphic, but can you imagine what it was like when the Lord's hand closed the ark and the rain began to fall? Remember, people had never seen rain until this point. That would be kind of shocking in and of itself. But then it says that even the fountains of the deep burst forth and, and just water began to flood the earth. And it only took for 40 days for there to be water high enough to, to cover mountaintops. It's, that's an incredible rush of time. And you think people would have been trying to run, trying to flee, grabbing their children, grabbing their loved ones, trying to get away. And while in the ark, imagine what that sounded like. Listening to all of creation, all of humanity, except for your family and some animals, you having to hear them drown, having to hear them die, listening to the pounding on the door because God shut the door, not, not Noah. God closed it and no one was able to open it until it was time. I can't imagine what that must have been like. You know, we, we watch, people watch these movies about the end of the world. Noah lived it and had to listen to everyone they knew die and drown. And, and y'all, drowning is not a way that I would wish upon anybody to, to pass. That suffocation, that, that just hopelessness, that knowing you're not going to get away. Imagine the weight, the heaviness of that. It's always sad to hear about someone dying. Even if, even if you didn't particularly know the person that well, when you hear of someone's family member that passes, you'll feel a heaviness because you know there's sadness, there's grief associated. The entire world, save for Noah's family, was gone in this moment. And then they had been in this boat. They had been in this place of trying to uh, stay safe from all of this, to, that, that God had put them in, in, in protection. Y'all, I'm so thankful that God protected me, that he protects me from things in this world, that when the enemy rises up like a flood, God rises a standard up against him. I'm grateful for that. But can I tell you, don't ever get too comfortable in the ark. That's not God's end game for Noah, and it's not for you either. Some of us have huddled up and, and just hunkered down for so long. We're worried about the world. We're worried about all the evil in the world that we have forgotten what God has really called us to do. God did not call Noah to just live in the ark the rest of his life. He said, I'm going to save you and give humanity a second chance. Aren't you thankful God saved you and gave you new life? eternally, gave you new life that will last forever. But can I tell you, your new life starts the moment you give it to Christ. He doesn't want you hunkered down living in an ark here on this earth. He wants you to start living life. Now, the first thing I want you to recognize is that God gave you a new life, so live it. Can I get an amen on that? So many people, it's like you think your life's going to start when you get to heaven. Church, it starts right now. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life now and have it more abundantly stop settling for your old life stop settling for the way the devil wants your life to be or the way your past wants to dictate that it is jesus says i've come to make you new i've come to make all things new and you are a new creature a new creation i'm going to live in that kind of victory i'm going to live that kind of life anybody with me i don't want to stay in the boat y'all and somebody needs to hear that it is time for you to get out of the boat and, and verse 15 and 16 is some some key things. You know, again, if Noah had stayed in the ark, humanity would have just died off. That, that could have been so overwhelming. I cannot think of, uh, of the, the decayed bodies. 
of the animals that had died, of just the, the, the complete destruction of any homes, of any buildings. Everything was gone, y'all. And you may sometimes feel like in your life, when, when God really changes you, it's like it feels like everything has changed. It's, it's a whole new world. It's a new start. And, and like, what am I going to do? It's overwhelming. You feel like, well, I don't want to do, I don't want to go to this. There's death there. I don't want to go to this. You know, that, that, that had to have been what, like, what it was like for Noah and his family. They get out of there and everything is, is gone that they'd ever known. And can I tell you, that's really how it is when we truly give our life to God. It's saying, Lord, I'm leaving behind everything. I repent of all my sin. I don't want to go back to that old stuff because, y'all, there's death there. There's decay. There's destruction there. We've got to start anew. And God had given Noah this second chance. The Lord gives us a second chance. But what are we going to do with it? Verse 15 says that then God spoke to Noah, saying, Go out of the ark. Somebody said, Go out. You and your wife. And your sons and your sons' wives and you. Noah could have sat there and been overwhelmed with all the death. He could have been overwhelmed with all that was lost. Can I give you something that God spoke to me? Is that you need to focus on what you have and not what you don't have. Can I tell you, that's what keeps a lot of people, that's what keeps a lot of us uh, bunkered down, hunkered down, afraid of the world, afraid of the devil, afraid of the enemy, is that we're so, we think all these things that we've lost, this battle that you've lost, or this, this, this relationship that's gone, or this, this thing, that this dream that seems to have died, whatever it might be, you feel like you've got all this stuff that is gone, you don't appreciate that that you have. Can I tell you, Noah had all he needed to start new. God had provided. God had said, this is all, God don't need much, y'all. He made all this out of nothing. So don't think if you look around, you say, I don't have much money. I don't have many friends. I, I don't have much this, that, or the other. Y'all, you got a whole lot more than God ever started with to create everything. Have faith in your Father and what He can do. God gave you a new life. You need to start living it. And you got to hear God's call, which is go out of the boat. Get out of the ark. No, it didn't just stay there. And this next thing I want to share with you, can I tell you, the Lord just laid this heavy on me and it's helped me. Uh, there's things going on in my world, in my life that I don't want to bore you with or bother you with. But can I tell you, I have struggles just like everybody else. But this next point, y'all, this is worth whatever you gave in the offering times 10, just of what God is going to speak to you right here, is that you need to make your dreams bigger than your memories. What got Noah out of the boat was he realized there was more in front of him than behind him. And you might say, well, I'm, I'm this age, or I, I've gone through so much, I've, I've done so much damage to my life, or I've made so many poor decisions. I was just talking to a brother this morning, he asked me to guess his age, I thought he was like 70 maybe, and I was really shooting high there, because he's so sharp and, and gets around well, he told me he's 91, but brother, I just, God bless you, I can't believe that, I'm, I'm praying I even get there, much less be doing half as good as you're doing, God has blessed him, and I, I'm, I'm uh, amazed at that. I tell you, I don't care where you're at in life. God still has a cause for you. He still has a purpose for you. You are still a blessing. You, you still have, if he's given you breath in your lungs, and he's given you a reason for living. And so you need to keep your dreams bigger than your memories. In verse 17, it said, Bring out with you every living thing of all flesh that is with you, birds and cattle, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, so that they may abound on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. Can I tell you again, God doesn't need much to do much. When you stop focusing on what you don't have, focus on what you do have, then you can start dreaming big. You can start realizing, what could God do with my life? And I tell you, I don't care what is going on in your world, what is going on in your life, that first part, what could God do is answered with whatever he wants God can do the impossible we we say it we sing it but do we really believe it you think God can do the impossible with everybody else but you that that's not true if God can do it for these broken down people look Noah had his mistakes even after the flood if you know if you've read his story he had a failure he got drunk and, and naked in his tent, embarrassing, you know, just had a, had a, a, a mishap. Th these are just people, too, that you read about in Scripture. Everybody except Jesus, they're just people like us. But they all 
have the same thing that we have access to, which is God. They all, they all realized that it wasn't about them, it was about the Lord. And I tell you, the bigger you dream, the greater your faith will be. And that's how it ought to be. That's a good thing, church. Some people, you wonder, why, why do my prayers not seem to be answered? Why, do, why does my life not seem to change? And can I tell you uh, something that the Lord gave me? We talked about this a little bit on Wednesday about having faith that actually works, faith that does something. Do y'all believe that God's word is true? That God is always God? He doesn't change. So can I tell you, we need to make sure our faith doesn't change with our emotions, doesn't change with our situation. Your faith in God needs to be consistent no matter what's going on around you. Because I tell you, when you start getting to a point that you don't expect things, this is a phrase that, that uh, I, I just I can't get out of my mind, is that if you don't expect it, then don't expect it. And that's the way it is with the Lord. Your dreams need to be bigger than your memories. If all you're worried about is how it used to be back in the day or how, how things uh, went right or went wrong, how, whatever you're worried about back then, can I tell you, your past does not have to define your future. You can learn from it. You can, you can overcome it, all that. But I tell you, what matters is what's in front of you. I promise you, you can't go change your past. But Jesus already did. The good news is, though, you can. You do have power. You do have authority of what you do next. You can do the next right thing. You can give your life to God from here on out. And I tell you, that's all God needs. They always say you give the devil an inch, he takes a mile. I tell you, all you got to give God is faith the size of a mustard seed. He can move a mountain. He can up pluck a, a mulberry tree and make it plant in, in the ocean. He can do whatever he wants as long as you trust him, as long as you're willing to give him. Y'all, I'm just going to speak this. Our world is not too far gone for God to reach it. I know where I was when God found me. Your family is not too far God, gone for God to reach them. Your health is not in so much disrepair. It's not like God needs some instruction manual to know how to heal you. All he's got to do is speak the word over you. He, he just has to just wave his arm, snap his fingers. However he feels like doing it, he can get it done instantly because that's who he is. Can I tell you, don't worry about your situation. Just bask in your salvation and all that comes with it. Jesus didn't just die so that we could have good church services. He died that we would have life and have it more abundantly. That's Sunday to Saturday, 24-7. He's open more than 7-Eleven. Amen. God is always with us, never leaves us, never forsakes us. You know this in your head. Now start living it with your life. Get out that boat that you've been confined to, that you're bunkering down, just trying to survive. The ark was like a survival. It makes me think of these people, these survivalists. They'll put, like, bunkers in the ground, and they're just going to get down there and hide and hope that after the nuclear holocaust they can emerge and survive. Can I tell you, we're not just survivors, church. The Bible says we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. We don't have to run from the devil. He needs to run from us. Amen. My goodness. God is so good, and he gave us this life. We need to live it. We need to dream big because our God is big. And can I tell you, this is something I just want you to throw this out of your heart, throw this out of your spirit, is a fear of failure. Because I, I, I'm going to tell you this is the truth. This is not just a motivational speech. This is, this is straight scripture. God does not mind if you try and fail, but he does mind if you fail to try. He doesn't care if you do your best and it seems like you come up short. Can I tell you, God will always do the rest. He always will. But if you never try, the, the, these, these things in life that you know God has called you to do, that you know God has, has asked you to reach out, you say, well, what if I pray for that person and they, they aren't healed? What if I go into this situation and it doesn't change? What if, what if I try hard on this job and I don't get that promotion? Can I tell you, I promise that you will fail 100% of the times that you don't try. But I tell you what, if you really figure out who you are in God, you will realize and remember that God doesn't ever fail. So no matter what it may look like to you, you need to know this. Do y'all believe that prayer changes things? It does. Every time you talk to God, he listens. He hears you. You may not see it exactly as you were expecting it, but I guarantee you God is seeing it exactly as he expects it, and he is changing it exactly as he wills it. And if you will trust your will, align it with him, can I tell you there is nothing that can stop you because there's nothing that can stop he who is within you and who you are in him. Praise the Lord. 
I wish people spoke like this. We speak like we don't believe this. We talk about how terrible the world is instead of about how good God is. We talk about how scary the terrorists and in, the enemies of our country are instead of the God whom this country was founded on. We need to remember that we are one nation under God. And I'll tell you, if there's just one of us that believes that, God will still provide protection for you. If you're just the last person, can I tell you, that's all it took was for Noah was found grace in God's eyes and all of humanity was saved through his family. You might feel like you're the only one, but with God, you're never alone. And that's something, the final thing I want you to remember this morning is remember God's promises, both about the past and about your future. The scripture is full of them. Some of y'all, God has even tried to get your attention by giving you promises through prophecy, promises through, through people speaking into you that, that your spirit has, has confirmed. They, they line up with God's word. You've got all the proof you need. You just got to start accepting it and living it. God's made promises about your past. His promises about your past is that all your sins, all that stuff you did, he removes it from you as far as the east is from the west. How come you can't even get it out your mind for five seconds? Can I tell you, you need to give that to the Lord and let him do with it what he does. Quit, quit holding it over your own head because God ain't doing it. He doesn't look at you in disdain or, or look at you as broken and, and useless. The moment that you give your life to Jesus, all he sees is his child. And you need to believe that and rest on that. So many people, you know, like I said, Noah spent 378 days in the ark can't imagine that then had to come out into this world it was scary but it was time he god told him get out of the ark and then god made some promises in verses 21 and 22 it said in verse 21 that the lord smelled a soothing aroma noah had built this altar to god the lord said in his heart i will never again curse the ground for man's sake and this next part is amazing. Although the imagination of every man's heart is evil from his youth. Do you know the Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God? Remember that the next time somebody tries to act high and mighty to you. We all start in the same place. We all start with a need for a Savior. But then it says, I will never do that. Even though their imagination is, is evil from their youth, and nor will I destroy Again, every living thing as I have done. God made a promise. He said, I'm not going to do that again. And I'll tell you what else God made a promise to us about our past. Is when Jesus spoke the words, it is finished. That was a promise from God. And I tell you, there's no more sacrifices we need to make. The Bible says God honors obedience over sacrifice anyway. So quit trying to feel like you've got to offer yourself up on the altar of self-pity. On the, the altar of, of guilt and remorse. Can I tell you, God doesn't need that offer. Jesus already bore our sin and our shame. He already did it, and he said it was enough. It is finished. He defeated death. He defeated hell. He defeated the grave all on the cross, all on Calvary when he got up out of that grave, and he's sitting at the right hand of the Father praying for you, not picking on you, not pointing out your faults. Stop doing it to yourself. Get out of the boat. Get out in the world. Live the way God has called you to live. Quit saying, well, I've just always done it this way or it's always been that way. Uh, can I tell you, you're going back to your old life. You're missing the point. No, start living differently. Start living the way God has called you. Remember God's promises about your past. Your past is taken care of, but also remember that God not only does not want to punish you for your past, he wants to provide for your future. Look at verse 22. God promised this, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer and day and night shall not cease. All those things are just going to keep cycling. Shoot, if you're in Texas, those things may all happen in the same day. We know they still occur. Amen. But seriously, y'all, God doesn't want you hunkered down, bunkered down. He doesn't want the church to be a fortress trying to just protect itself from the world. It says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it. We don't need to run into to our little holy huddles and be afraid of this world. We need to go out and change this world for the cause of Christ. It is time to get out of the boat. It's time to make a difference with your life. And the, the way you're going to have to do that is 
Get out of your comfort zone. Get out of that, even that place that you might have felt protection. Can I tell you, it's not the ark that protected Noah. It was the Lord. It, it is not, it is not you, your own doing that has protected you. I know Noah technically built the ark. God's the one that gave him the specifications and, and all that. But even though he built it, even though you may think, well, I've built up my bank account. I, I've built up my relationships. I've built up my popularity. or I've built up my influence. Can I tell you, you didn't do anything without God's help. So, so that's a good thing, though. That means all of that is the Lord's protection, his provision for you. So why do you worry then when a problem arises? You aren't the one that got yourself out of the first problem you were ever in, which was your, your sin. You weren't the one that saved yourself anyway. It was Christ who did it for you. While you were still a sinner, he went to the cross for you. You didn't do it in the first place. Why do we get so worried about our, ourselves now? We just need to have faith in who God is and who he says we are. If God says it's so, who am I to argue with him? And God says that I am the righteousness of his in Christ Jesus. God says that I don't have a thing to prove. God says that the devil can't do nothing with me, that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And I tell you, I don't have to hide from the devil. The devil better run and hide from me because I'm coming for him. He needs to get away from my family. He needs to get away from your household. He needs to get away from our schools. We're worried about people coming in and shooting our schools. The enemy should be worried about people coming in and laying hands on children, preaching the gospel, laying hands on them in a good way, preaching the gospel of Jesus, showing them the light, showing them the truth. I tell you, Congress cannot pass a law that can keep God out of people's hearts you saw it with Daniel my namesake in the Old Testament they said you you can't pray three times a day what what are you really worried about that the government's going to do to you they tried throwing boys in the, in the flaming furnace and all that did was change the entire nation when that fire couldn't destroy them they tried throwing Daniel in a lion's den all that did was change policy it got those stinking politicians thrown in the lion's den wouldn't some people love to see that amen I'm just kidding we should be forgiving but you know what I mean Stand with me, please, because I, I quit preaching and started meddling. That's no good. Stand with me. If somebody will come to the music, please. I, I know I'm not just saying this to try to be act mystical or whatever. I just know this. I'm speaking to some specific people this morning. That This message is for you. That you've been kind of stuck in life, stuck in a place in your spirit where you've almost been afraid to venture out, afraid to start over. You know, some examples would be, you know, in your relationships with other people, you may feel like they've been too severed, they've been too messed up with your children, with your parents, with your family, whatever, your spouse. You're afraid to start over. There's too much pain there. There's too much heartache, too much of a past. So you've retreated to a safe place. You think. You've retreated to this place just to try to survive the storm. Life throws a lot of storms at us. Some of you, you're afraid to trust people. I have probably spoken to, no joke, a dozen people. Many of you are in this room today. I, I would never you know, betray your trust or point out who I'm talking about. But I, I bet I've had a dozen, no exaggeration, from our church just say, I just, I, I'm so afraid to tell people how I really feel or how I really am. And I almost wish I could put y'all all in a room together because you're all so wonderful. And you're afraid people won't like you. You're afraid people won't, won't, won't love you anymore if they just knew your worries, if they knew your past, if they knew what you had done. Can I tell you, that is the, the lie that the devil wants you to believe. That is not the truth that God wants you to receive. And again, I, I, we sometimes huddle down. We protect ourselves, we think, from each other, from, from trusting, from, from even trusting the Lord. We don't even want God to know what we really think or who we really are, and he already knows. If you feel stuck in your life, in your situation, you're just riding the storm. It's a problem on the job, a problem in your family, a problem in your physical body. You're just riding it out, hoping for the best. You are here today for a reason. My goodness, I feel the power of God in this place. And I just want to speak to you what God spoke to Noah and hear it as the word of God. This is different from just reading words that happened many, many centuries ago. Hear the, the heart of God for you today. 
on this, this Sunday morning right here in Iowa Park. The Lord is speaking to you to go get out of the ark. Get out of that place that you feel like you're just trying to survive. Get out of that place that you just, you've tried to feel safe by cutting yourself off from everybody else, from even cutting yourself off from the Lord. Put yourself out there. Let your dreams be bigger than your memories. And take that life that God has given you and live it. Stop looking down at yourself. Stop hanging your head down. Stop accepting sickness. Stop accepting defeat. Stop accepting that this is how your family's always going to be. If you don't expect anything out of God, then don't expect anything out of God. But I promise if you trust Him, His promises are always true. His answer is always yes and amen. Can somebody say hallelujah? That dream God put in your heart, that gift God has given into your life, that, that situation that God has challenged you to believe, to change, He will do this morning. If that's you and you just feel stuck and you say, I need the Holy Spirit to get me unstuck, would you raise your hand right where you're at? Is there anybody? Yeah, anybody else? Praise God. Praise God. Keep, keep your hand up for just a second. I just want to pray for you right where you're at, that God would, would shake you loose. And here's what I believe He's going to do. He's going to speak something to you. God always wants us to trust Him with faith. But y'all, the Bible tells us very clearly, faith without works is dead. So God is going to put something in your heart for you to do. It may be to forgive yourself. It may be to give yourself a break and stop feeling like you're the root of all your problems. Can I tell you, the devil is the one that's against you. Don't be against yourself because God is for you. He's not against you. Trust in the Lord that he is on your side. And I pray that God will shake you loose. He will put different people, different situations in your life. But you are going to have to get out of that place. You're going to have to get out of that ark. Trust me, God's already provided for you. He's already got the future ready for you. All you got to do is walk out of it. Walk in it. Start living in it right now in this instant. Say, I believe things are getting better. My daddy used to say it this way. Every day in every way I'm getting better. I used to wonder, how could my dad say that while his body was breaking down? As the Parkinson's took over, he would still quote that every single day. I got frustrated at him. I got mad at God. How could you say every day in every way I'm getting better? It's, it's, it just seemed like he was dying before my eyes. Can I tell you all, church, my daddy knew what was coming, and his future was bright, and he was exactly right. The moment he took his last breath here, his days got better than they've ever been in his past his body is stronger than it was when he was a young man his life is eternally in the hands of his heavenly father and he knew that and he claimed that and he overcame so much through his faith I want the same thing for you I want you to speak that over your life every day in every way I'm getting better every day devil you need to hear that because I'm coming for you devil you need to watch out for me because I'm coming right at you and it says that we the gates of hell can't prevail against us and then when we resist the devil, he has to flee. I speak that over those of you that feel stuck. In Jesus' name, be set free. In Jesus' name, be different. Be changed. Be challenged to just recognize who you are in God. And the Word of God says that he who the Son sets free is free indeed. Depression, suicidal thoughts, thoughts of giving up on yourself, giving up on your business, giving up on your family. Those die right now. All that's going to be alive is that that God has put in you, which is a life of purpose, a life of promises that come directly from heaven above. My goodness. Just accept that. Accept that prophetic word over your life. That, that is straight from what I believe God has put in my heart to tell you. Now, before I, I dismiss you, before we go from this place, some of you, your faith is strong, but your body doesn't feel that way. Uh, the, the Scripture, you know, will say, or we, we say it this way, that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Can I just tell you, God's the one that designed your body. He created it, and he can heal it. And, before we go, I just want to in, encourage and invite, if there's anybody in here that you need physical healing in your body, you need the Lord to touch and heal you. W would you honor God, honor, honor the Holy Spirit, what he's speaking right now? If that's you, I just want you to raise your hand where you're at.
You say, I need a touch in my physical body. Is there anybody around here? Praise the Lord. Some of you that are that are believers, if you are children of God, can I tell you, you don't have to have the preacher lay hands on. You don't really have to have anybody. But I want, would you hold your hands up for just, just a few seconds more? And would somebody, look around, church. Let's be the body of Christ, right? Will you find somebody with their hand up? And I believe people are about to be healed right now instantaneously in the name of Jesus. There, there's people over here that need somebody. Move. Don't, don't get complacent. My goodness, we're in the church house. Right over here, we've got people that need somebody to put their hand on their shoulder just to be in agreement with them. Will you do that? Will you be obedient in this moment? It doesn't have to just be one person. Find somebody, and let's watch what God will do in this place. Would you all just agree with me in prayer before we're, before we're dismissed? that we're going to pray for your physical healing. God brought you here today so that he could bring you through this moment. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I speak healing in this house, healing in this place. We are gathered in your name, so your very presence, your very essence is here. And God, I just, I believe in who you are and what you do. And so, God, I'm not going to put on some kind of show. I'm not going to speak just some emotional outburst, but I'm going to speak the truth, which is that you love these people so much you do not want them hurting. You do not want their bodies to be weak and wounded. I believe that with all of my heart. And so, Father, through the hands and feet of Jesus Christ, we declare healing into this place. If you've got somebody that's not in this building, you can pray for them too right now. And I'll tell you, God's Spirit can touch them right where they are. Father, we speak healing virtue through Jesus Christ. So many people came to Jesus in need of healing but one man came and said you don't even have to come to my house you can just speak the word and so God we speak healing just like you did for the centurion soldier for his servant God we, we speak over your servants health and healing some of y'all are receiving that right now you're believing it and you're receiving it can I tell you it don't matter if you believe it or not God is doing a work in your body right now I speak that in the name of Jesus full healing all pain be gone all sickness has to go because it can't coexist where God's presence is, where the Holy Spirit resides. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And he does not want to share his space with sickness. He does not want to share his space with pain. Will anybody receive that in this place? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you believe that, church, would somebody give God praise this morning, this afternoon? Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. I, I believe what I said. And look, I, I don't believe that you necessarily have to have anybody else pray for you. But if you, if you would like me to be in agreement with you, you want to hang around, I, I, I've just got to tell you what God is telling me. He doesn't want you walking out of this place without full healing. And so I'll hang around as long as you want, as long as, as, long as it, it, you think it might take. But I tell you, God can do an amazing thing for you this morning. Some of you already received it. But before we go, let's... Let's commit to have a mentality like we should. We believe in God's promises about our past and our future. And let's go out, get out of the boat, get out of your everyday routine and let God use your life for his glory. Would you pray that way with me as we get ready to dismiss? Father, thank you so much for your son Jesus Christ, the gift that he was for us. Thank you, Holy Spirit that you reside in us when we receive you by faith, and that, that God, you are in our heart, you are in our very life, and, and we are in you. And that God, that comes with promises, that comes with guarantees from your word. Let us stand upon those promises, live according to them, and receive from you all that you have for us. God, now let us go forth, get out of the boat, get out of our comfort zone, and go take back what the enemy has tried to take from this world that you gave us. We love you, Jesus. We claim victory through your name. And all God's people said, amen. Go with God. God bless you. You're dismissed.